Hello everyone, I'm Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and this is your Swing Trading Stock Market Outlook for the week of July 8th. If you're ever wondering where this article is, you can go to, it's updated each week, you can go to Stocks, Stock Market Analysis and Trades and you'll find this updated each week. And then at the bottom you can find the historical values. So heading into this week, not much has changed. It's it's really interesting because if you look at the indices, they look so good. The S and P, the Nasdaq, you know, just shooting up here. Yet when we look at the market health indicators and the NYSE Composite, which is a very broad measure of stocks, all different industries, all different sizes, it's just like doing nothing. The Russell 2000, which a lot of people think of as small cap stocks, and it is. But what the Russell 2000 really is is it's the lar the there's the largest 3,000 companies in the U.S. and the Russell 2000 is the smallest of the largest 3,000. So yes, it, it's smaller cap than of course the largest 500, which is the S&P 500. But you know it, it includes a, a wide array of stocks too, 2,000 stocks. It's a lot, and it's doing nothing. It's pretty much going down. The Canadian index still in uh, recovery mode here. Took out a new uh, lower low there. I do like these trades. We're gonna talk about that with Bitcoin when you have this type of pattern. It just breaks below. You have this nice little consolidation and then it starts going up. But either way, uh, and then hard sell off Friday. So it's, yeah, definitely mixed out there. Uh, so let's go through it kind of in order. We already looked at these things. It's just, I mean, it's it's good if you're in a few stocks that are doing really well, but if you know you're kind of running a scan and you potentially have multiple trades out there, it could be a rough time because a lot of the stocks that you might be buying on a breakout or moving above its moving average or whatever signal you use to enter, this is more likely kind of what you're seeing. It's uh, you know it might go up a little bit and then it just stalls out. And yeah, some stocks are running and they're big companies, which is why they're helping to push the index. Indexes, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are not equally weighted. That It means there's not, they didn't buy, you know, 500 stocks with, you know, 0.2% in each one, or 1% 1 of the NASDAQ is dedicated to a single stock. The indexes are heavily, heavily weighted uh, in a few stocks that have performed well, generally. So you can have, uh, I believe when I looked at the S&P 500, you have about 20% of the S&P 500 in just a handful of stocks. And if those stocks happen to do well, it's gonna drag up the whole index, even though the other you know, 490 stocks may not be doing as well. You know, some obviously are, but you could have you know, three, 400 stocks that are just flatlining, but if those top few are going up, it's gonna make the indexes look really good. But if you're placing trades, as I said, in multiple stocks, it might uh, seem a little tougher conditions than what the indices are presenting. So that's pretty much that. Oh yeah, we gotta look at Bitcoin. So I, I like this situation right here. Uh, we don't see the full rally, but the rally you know started down here. So this is just a consolidation phase. Uh, this whole move's kind of around 20%, maybe a little bit more. Uh, that's still just a correction phase for Bitcoin. So we had the move down, the move up. Didn't quite hit that high, but it took out all these lows and then has uh, the sharp reversal that we can see. So I like these uh, kind of trades, especially if you, you have a long-term, um, or your overall view is that this still is an uptrend. If we were to look at the bigger chart, we would see that. And yeah, this is just kind of a sideways consolidation or correction within that overall uh, bull market. So this is really interesting to me. Provides a potential entry here, stop loss below here, and you have the potential toward the top of the range. Even if you just went to here, it looks like a decent risk reward just uh, visualizing it. But really, I like it for the potential long-term move. If we get the move up and then we break these highs, 
probably going to 100k so we have and again I, I don't make predictions it's just I look at how things have moved uh, how far things typically move when they do move and that's what I use for uh, my target sort of like an assumption that what has happened in the past and I'm generally a little bit conservative so if something's gone up you know 50% on its recent rallies I'll assume that it could reasonably go up 30 to 40 percent and if it goes up a little bit more great if it doesn't uh, doesn't quite hit that 50 percent it's been doing before I'm probably safe at you know assuming it can move up 30 to 50 percent and I do have a full breakdown on the website of how Bitcoin typically moves where is it uh, under investing how Bitcoin moves, and I've broken down every uh, cycle, how much it typically moves, all that stuff. Yeah, so that that one's an interesting one. Gold, you know, I've, you know, may, that's what markets do. They kind of make you disenchanted with them, and I have become disenchanted with gold. It's just been such kind of a gross, choppy trade recently. Uh, but we did get this, you know, you can kind of see it start to bottoming out here. So we have a little bit of a rounded bottom forming. You know, if the next pullback stays at a higher low, maybe uh, that becomes more interesting. Same with the uh, gold miner stocks. They may just keep shooting up. But, yeah, if they, if they keep running and we get a pullback that's at a higher swing low, could uh, potentially look at that again. It has been choppy. But once momentum starts again, that's what piques my interest. So we are seeing some momentum again. And yeah, so still on the sidelines with that one a bit. But if it continues to look good, it may get me involved again. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin been involved all along uh, through most of this uptrend, sold some. And as I've discussed in videos, the, the old swing high or the old prior high was 69,000. So I got some out there. I got some out on this uh, decline recently and maybe looking to get back in here. Let's look at the market health indicators because this is what is interesting. Indexes look really good. Under the hood, not so good. Volume, I don't care about right now. This is, this one's still showing a good thing for the uptrend this is daily percentage movement of the s p 500 really high values uh, especially negative show more bearish conditions when we have very low volatility i've put some little parameters here i don't really care as much about the big one but this one i really do two percent down days we have not had any in a very long time throughout this entire uptrend even during this decline we didn't have any, which told us it was a minor correction as opposed to a big, likely scary bear market. So that was good. And it's continued to stay that way. We're in a really low volatile, very kind of complacent type market at the moment. If we start seeing those 2% downside days, even one, that's a big warning sign. It says big selling is coming into the market. We have not seen that yet, so still smiley face. This is still, you know, uptrend, uptrend behavior. This is the advanced decline line for the NYSE composite. Advancing stocks minus declining stocks is a cumulative number. This was really ugly. The S&P was really moving up, and this was moving down. And we'll, we can see why when we look at the NASDAQ index or sorry, the NYSE index, just basically flatlining. So a lot of stocks not participating in that rally. And it's just starting to kind of move up a little bit. And, you know, we could almost say this is kind of flat. This swing high is just barely above these other ones, but it is at least edging up. We're no longer moving down. So I left this as neutral, but it is starting to look a little bit more favorable. Uh, this is up volume divided by total volume. There's nothing there at the moment. I look for extreme values, and you can see these are all between this, these upper lines and these lower black line. If they're in the middle, I don't care. I really want extreme values to show uh, extreme buying or extreme selling coming into the market. And this one's also very telling. How many stocks 
the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average. If you look at that S&P, and I just threw the 50-day moving average on here to show. So this is a 50-day moving average, and you can see the S&P well above it. When we look at that, we think, well, yeah, the market must be doing very good. We go down here, only 44% of S&P 500 stocks are above their 50-day moving average. When you think about that, only half of stocks are above you know, this, this, their own 50-day moving average. Out of all US stocks, only 39% are above their 50-day moving average. A very different story than what we're seeing on the S&P 500 chart. If you, just, if you went through all the stocks on the stock market, you would see most of them below their 50-day moving average and not doing so well. Definitely not this kind of uptrend that we're seeing in the S&P 500. That's going to generally make it a little harder to make money when looking at, you know, potentially trading multiple stocks. Um, yeah, so just not ideal types of conditions, a little bit mediocre. Let's look at the sectors on the move. Pretty much technology and communication services. This has been going on for a while. They had a little bit of a, a sell-off there a little while ago, but they've pretty much been uh, strong performers all along. So what am I doing right now? Not considering long stock trades until conditions improve. Uh, I have been more active in Bitcoin. It, it was a longer term trade, and which I took some profit on, now potentially getting back in. Gold and GDX, they could become more interesting again. And of course, it, just because I say I'm not taking swing trades, that does not mean I am not active. There's the passive investing, there's day trading. So I, you know, I, I do partake in the market, even though my specific swing trading of stocks may not have been uh, very active. And there was also that, that big trade in Bitcoin. So, you know, that was a really profitable trade over the last year and a bit. So I, I felt less compelled to actively trade stocks when that, that was really working well. So during these conditions, it, it's important to think about that from your psychology is when something is really working well, we maybe it's even I've been a little bit lazy. So um, I don't think that's the case, though. I'm, I haven't loved the market conditions, so I've, I've been staying out. But when when something's really working, then, you know, we, we let it play out. Uh, but if that trade hadn't been there, if I wasn't making money in Bitcoin, I do have to think about how my psychology would have been different. Would I have been trying to force some trades uh, in environments that were a little bit tougher? And I'm not just talking about this time, I'm talking about, you know, over the last year and a half, we have these cycles of good conditions, not so great conditions, not trading, and that kind of ebbs and flows. And if you have kind of a longer term position that's really working, that's why I like the passive investing too, because it's like, even though I'm not invested in a lot of, or I'm, I'm not taking a lot of swing trades right now, those passive investments are still going up, right? If if the market keeps going up and it's S&P 500 funds and NASDAQ funds, if those are doing well, that, that takes a lot of pressure off uh, the swing trading because I know I'm at least making that return. And if I don't really like the conditions, then I don't feel compelled to, you know, over trade. And I think that's a problem for a lot of people is, um, they feel a lot of pressure to trade and to make money. But this is why I've kind of organized everything the way I have, is where I have the passive investing. So I'm kind of guaranteed that minimum index return. Um, when conditions are bad, I can potentially short. Uh, when conditions are really good, that's when we really go aggressive on the long side. And then we also have the kind of day trading, which is a little bit more... I don't want to call it stable income, but at least we can make trades most days. So that's how I have it all set up and how I like it. And 
you know, you, you might want to consider doing the same thing. If you've noticed uh, you find you put a lot of pressure on yourself to trade when conditions aren't good. And of course, this is my method. You may, your method may be doing just fine right now if you're just, you know, focused on a couple stocks that have been doing well, or uh, just your entries happen to have been working recently. That's totally fine. Um, I've just found when those indicators, those market health indicators aren't very good, I notice my results aren't as good, so it's not worth my effort to put in time into those trades. So I hope you have a great week out there, and that is your weekly stock market outlook.